Hey guys, I'm Devin Fay, and thanks for checking out my article on 3D World. Um, I wanted to make this video and go over a few things just to clarify, just in case anything didn't really come out in the article perfectly, and uh, just kind of show you hands on how to deal with some of this stuff. The first thing I want to go over is how to actually put these layers together. It's talked about uh, pretty in depth in the actual article but I just kinda wanna show you exactly what I'm talking about so I'm gonna provide this PSD for you guys to download but I wanna go over it a little bit so firstly um, the layers that I create we can take a look at my Maya scene and we can actually look at the layers that I create here now these are actually created through the render elements tab as I talked about and if we open up the layers here we can see we have our ambient light separated, our rim light, our key light. We have a diffuse. This is just um, more there just to kind of double check everything, make sure everything's looking good. Uh, global illumination, reflection, refraction, and self illumination. So, as I mentioned in the article, these are like the most important ones to have, plus your um, ambient occlusion, which I talk about how to uh, go over that as well. So let's take a look at how to put those together. So I usually keep my diffuse and my beauty passes here separate. So this is my beauty pass and this is my diffuse pass. I kind of put them lower on just to have them there if I need to go over them later uh, to reference them to make sure things are kind of going not too far crazy in the wrong direction. Next, I usually put a black layer. I'll talk about that in a second. A global illumination layer and an ambient layer as well as my ambient occlusion layer. So these are basically my ambient um, layers. So um, hang on, let me go ahead and create a, a new layer comp here, uh, just so I can get back to this pretty easily. But if I turn this all off and just look at my black layer, <coughs> my uh, GI layer, my ambient layer, and my ambient occlusion layer, we can see what we have here. The reason I have this black layer under here is so I can easily um, adjust the opacity of these layers and just have something solid behind it because I'm basically fading these lights off is how you should think about it and you can see these are set to this one's set to normal but it could be set to add probably should be this one's set to add and the ambient occlusion is actually set to multiply there's a levels here that I don't actually need so what's important about that is the multiply, which is the ambient occlusion, is just multiplying on top of my ambient lights. And these are adding together, creating this. So if I turn off my ambient light, this is just my GI. If I turn back on my ambient light, and then if I turn off my global, or my ambient occlusion rather, we're losing that. So remember, it's called ambient occlusion, meaning it's occluding the ambient light. You don't want to put this all over direct light. It's going to look wrong. It will just be wrong. So what do we do after that? We add the key light. So here's our key light. You notice um, I have a photo filter on top of that. This is kind of the first step I usually do just because I can adjust the warmth of this key light. So I make it a little bit warmer here. And then I have a rim light, which I can turn on back here. And same thing, I put a photo filter on it. Again, it's just because it's easy. It's fast. I can, I can make broad changes this way. I might go in later on at a levels to really adjust everything separately but this is usually how I start it. So this one's a little bit cooler. It's kind of a classic look. Um, if I turn all this stuff off, um, you can see I just have the key, or sorry, here's the rim, and here's the key, separate. But then with everything on, it's starting to feel more like the image, more like the beauty pass. And these are added on as well, add, add. Also reflection, that's added back on top. So you can see now the metals are starting to look like metals, the glass starting to look like glass, that sort of thing. The refraction as well so now this is adding in anything that's seen through the refraction um, quite it makes quite a quite a nice um, difference here and then the self-illumination uh, really in this pass it's really just uh, the lantern here um, the reflect refraction by the way is really just this stuff the reason this is refracting and these are refracting is because there's actually glass in front of these so there's self-illumination behind it glass in front of it so it's actually refracting through which is why um, the self-illumination and this refraction pass are going to work together a lot. I also have this reflection pass 
Um, as I pointed out before, I just want to show it. There, here's all just the reflections. Separating that all together, adding them all on top of each other is kind of the first step. So add, add, add. Everything's add except for the ambient occlusion. Again, talked about in the article, but clarifying. So you can do things like here, I've duplicated the reflection pass, and then I've, I've masked it out so it's just in the areas of this arm here, just so this area looks a little bit more reflective. So these are the kind of things that you can do. So if we look at this reflection pass, if we want the glasses to be more or less reflection, have more or less reflection, that's how we do it because we have it separated out it's quite easy so let's go a little bit further those are our main passes I like to group those together so they kind of hang out there uh, I'm going to talk about well so the next thing I do is I, I do a grunge pass but um, I'm not going to talk about this quite yet I want to talk about the glows so the glows are pretty uh, easily done going with this kind of setup that I have where we're looking at our self illumination and our ref refraction kind of being um, our glowy bits. Um, again, just to quickly look back at that self illumination, that's going to be the majority of them, but just because of the nature of our weird, um, you know, lights and stuff behind refraction, um, we get those things. So I just combine those two together. Um, you might need to paint some stuff out, but that's really easy to do. If we look at our refraction, we don't want the Kirin glasses or the bottles glowing. We just want that stuff. So it's just really easy. Just paint that out. But you combine those together and you get some glows. Um, so I combine those together. I mean, we can look at it, but it's going to look a little. So that's what it looks like. So you can see it's, you know, the the light, the fluorescent lights, and the lantern. And I added a glow to that. So here is one of them, and here is the other one. So you'll notice a couple things here. Um, and I always like to do this, I think it's important, is do multiple layers of um, Gaussian blur. So blur, Gaussian blur on these things. So this one here is just a little, it's like eight, pixels or whatever blur and this one's like 30 it's like much more blurry um, by doing that you can combine them together and get a much more interesting blur to your actual um, glows um, it gets more complex it's it looks less CG it looks more realistic the other thing I like to do again talked about is adding maybe a slight different color to the blurs and you can do a lot of fun stuff with this like right now it's warm because most of these are warm but you can even go cool with them and get kind of a, a, a neat look out of this stuff um, so you can play around with this a lot but I really recommend adjusting your blurs and um, your blur amounts and your blur colors it's just gonna make it look much more interesting so um, on top of that, just to quickly talk about, I have my lens flare. So again, this is talked about in the article. It's totally unnecessary lens flare on this um, lantern. But just to show, you can put it on there, and then you can kind of adjust it. Um, I usually put an exposure node on that, and um, I usually try and use the gamma correction node first to adjust my, my lens flares. And then when, when I need to, I'll adjust the opacity afterwards. If you just adjust the opacity since it's added on top, it's going to look kind of gray and not look right as you start bringing it down. So I really recommend using the gamma as much as possible. So let's go back down here to these decals. So this is kind of a big step as well. So let's take a look at these. So I have my grunge decals, so I can turn these off and on. And you can see this is, I, I do a lot of my work this way where I just overlay these grunge textures on top of um, my image. So it's actually not even overlaid, sorry. It's, most of them are multiply. I try and keep multiply and overlay as much as possible. So these are just grungy textures from sugitextures.com and then as mentioned in the article, it's really important that you make sure you get the proper um, perspective to them as you're laying them on there. That way they look natural. The other stuff here is like textural detail. So there's grunge and then textural stuff. So if you look and I can turn on and off this cardboard textures that I, I've added to here and it's just really pumping up this really simple looking texture to have a lot more detail in it. And I like to do this on a lot 
of stuff and things that just need it, things that are obvious. Um, so I do that a lot, as you can see in the final image. So the last thing I want to go over here before we go into a little bit more of a demo is just kind of the overall color corrections. So unfortunately, this is probably pretty dark for most of you. Uh, which I apologize for, um, but my overall color, that's because that's basically because one of my monitors is a lot brighter than the other one. So it's important that you check these things, your final image, especially if you're doing a night scene on multiple monitors, make sure that you nail that in. So um, I can add something like this, like a final exposure node that should bump it up into a more kind of um, better range for most monitors. And then other things I like to do are like a gradient map and a, another photo filter. This gradient map, if I turn this all the way on, you can see it's basically, let's see if we can actually set it to normal here. So what this gradient map is doing, um, again, this is just an adjustment layer, is it's taking all of the dark colors and tinting them purple and all of the light colors and tinting them orange. And um, I love you can set this to color. I like doing this. It adds a bit more of an interesting look to everything, but you got to bring it way down or it's going to look a little cheesy. And then overall, I put a photo filter on top of everything, and this kind of helps bring everything into a normalized color. So in this case, it's a warming filter. But if you did something like cooling, it would kind of give... What I like about this is it gives an overall wash over everything and it helps kind of just solidify the colors a little bit better. Um, it's a nice look. So basically to finish off most image, I just most images that I make, uh, there's a few steps that I do. So I kind of want to go over that stuff. Um, let me go ahead and open back up this layer comps, make sure that we're good to go. All right, so the last thing, cause I like to keep everything as basically um, as non-destructive as possible. But when you kind of do your last few things, sometimes you do have to kind of merge it down and go from there. Um, but there's a few things that we can do right now. One thing I like to do is add, um, usually I'll add some sort of a vignette. So I'll add a layers adjustment here. Make it pretty dark. And then I'll just invert that mask. I like to do this by hand with like a really big soft brush usually. And then just kind of paint in where I want the vignette to be. And this way I can kind of control how I want it basically. So in this particular plate, in this particular spot, vignetting is not going to help a whole lot, mostly in the corners here. But the thing uh, to keep in mind when you are vignetting is to stay away from blurring out like your actual subject matter and don't get it on top of your light source it really looks funky when you have it on these like glows and everything that you spent all this time on it's it's not a good look so we'll add a little bit here but just make sure that it's not on top of our stuff and we can turn that on and off and see it helps a little bit and then i usually will bring it down back from what i actually did so it helps a little bit just to kind of focus more on the middle of the screen um but it, um Again, it really depends on the image on how much you want to go into this. So from here, I'll usually merge everything down into one layer here. And I'll do a few more things. So um, for instance, um, one thing I like to do is do a liquify on some of my stuff. So things that have um, a more natural look to them, uh, like cloth and like this box here that is looking really kind of lame looking. I'll liquefy this up a little bit. Now, these are things you can do in layers for sure, but it just depends on how far you want to take it. I don't want to go too much with it. So I'm just going to go real gentle with it because liquefy really, really does um, blur the crap out of your image. But I just want to break up that. And th I mean, that doesn't look great, but I'll call it good for now. I just want to break up that edge. Um, I should have kept it a little more broad, but... It's fine. Honestly, like if we go undo, like it's probably better like this than that perfect straight line anyways. The other thing that I find really important is sharpening. So I use the unsharp mask and then I usually go more overboard than I should with this, but I feel like it's an important step to kind of bring out some of your, your render usually doesn't quite get the sharpness that you want. And a few other things are uh, well, kind of the last thing really, and you can actually keep this as a separate step as well, 
um, and I'll show that but um, so I'll duplicate this just before I do it but chromatic aberration so again this is talked about in the um, in the article to be careful with the chromatic aberration don't go too crazy with it because it's a really kind of cliche overused look right now so in fact in most cases I would just say don't use it on a sci-fi scene I feel like you can kind of get away with it a little bit but as I said the way that I like to do it personally is I like to do it more on my light sources and not all over the place so we can take a look at that that's under lens correction is the easiest way to do it There's a bunch of different ways you can do this but we can say over here this is chromatic aberration this is for fixing it basically but we can use it to basically add it and that's another thing to remember like chromatic aberration looks cool but it's a bug like it's it's not a bug it, it's 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 not right it's a it's basically from cheap lenses and cheap cameras is how you get this stuff so it might help add like quote realism but it's also just remember you're adding um something that is uh, typically not wanted um, which I think I really do feel like chromatic aberration in another year or two is gonna really be thought of as like the lens flare effect here so if we look in we can kind of see what we're getting here this is the chromatic aberration and, and that's the thing I, I will admit it does look pretty appealing and it looks pretty good but what we can do is we can add a mass to this thing invert it and we'll just add it to our light sources we can even actually um, if we invert this one more time actually we can add that chromatic aberration pass one more time and really push it the more we add this so if we add it again you can see it gets further and further out so what we can do that's probably one too many but we can kind of really make it look crazy and then we can just paint this in using our mask just in the areas that we want it like just on our light sources here So let's go ahead and look at this a little bit closer. And I do really mean like just in the light source. So I don't want it leaking too far out. So like up on these chains, I don't want it up in there. I don't want it up in here. I just kind of want it where the light source is. So you really got to kind of be stringent with it. I, re I really think personally. Um, so this kind of gives it a, just a slight different look to it. Um, doesn't add a lot it just adds a little bit of interest and it's not over the top like a lot of people have been using it recently so with that I kinda call this done it, it's not you know this is a quick kind of almost still life or whatnot but um, this is basically how I approach the scene um, that I made in the article so I hope that kinda clarifies some of the stuff I talked about and um, yeah I hope you guys enjoyed it thanks for checking it out